Hello, I'm Darren McGinn. Today's question asks if I would discuss some of the common characteristics and traits of a narcissistic father-in-law. Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. But just as a reminder, this video is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional, nor is it a tool to be used to diagnose someone. Now, when I'm talking about narcissism, I'm not referring to someone who can be difficult, selfish, maybe opinionated from time to time. I think if we're honest, we can all be like that from time to time. Now, I'm talking about pathological narcissism, the behaviours, the characteristics, the traits. They are long term, they are persistent and they are pervasive. And some of those characteristics include a sense of entitlement, being disagreeable. There's grandiosity, a, a lack of empathy, and either being highly resistant or highly sensitive to criticism. Now, as much as we can choose our partners, sadly, we don't get to choose our in-laws. We can be fortunate. They may be great people. They may be eccentric. They may be irritating at times. They can even be overzealous. But that doesn't necessarily make them toxic. Where there is narcissism, quite often what we find is a lot of controlling behaviour. There's a lot of harsh judgments. They can be abrasive with their criticism and very manipulative. And for today, when we're talking about a narcissistic father-in-law, rather than continually talk about either a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law, I'm just going to refer to the partner. That's going to be the partner of the narcissistic father's child, okay? So something to consider is before he was a father-in-law, he was a father. So before he was a narcissistic father-in-law, he's been a narcissistic father. He's been the center of the universe. The children are extensions of himself. So the partner, date any grandchildren, are often going to be treated the same way. So if he pitted his own children against each other, he's probably going to do the same with the partner, perhaps comparing them unfavorably to others, his own children or the other sons and daughters-in-law. There may be triangulation, there may be spreading gossip. And when it comes to the relationship between the partner and the narcissistic father-in-law, if he doesn't approve of the partner, he's not going to make a secret of it. Now, this could manifest itself in different ways. For example, they may be met with the silent treatment. They may be met with contempt, constant criticism. And he can come across as being pompous and opinionated. Maybe the partner hasn't done enough to earn his respect. Now, in reality, they probably never will. But any mistakes, errors are generally going to be jumped upon. Achievements, however, and accomplishments may either be scorned or just ignored. He will always be right. He will always be justified. He is never really going to be responsible for any of the contention or distress that his behaviour causes. It will be the fault of the partner or it will be the fault of his own child's poor choice of partner. Another common characteristic is he will know more about that partner's profession than they do. Now, he will either think it's a bad idea to go into that line of work or he may criticise them. They haven't advanced up the career ladder far enough. They're not being paid enough. He may advise them. He may guide them with his, his own so-called wisdom. And this would be true in a lot of different areas. Now, he, he may have the same superior kind of knowledge uh, of any hobbies or interests the partner may have. He will have more interest in it. He has done that same thing for years. Either that or it will be criticised as a waste of time. Another common behaviour may be just turning up at their house unannounced to do alterations, repairs or to decorate. Now, you know, he was just passing, he just happened to have his toolkit with him, you know, or he's noticed something that they didn't, that needs urgent attention. Or, you know what, perhaps he may turn up to undo or to do a better job than the partner had done. Other times, they may recognise they need a bit of work done and he will know, he generally knows who to contact to do the job for them. He knows the best person to do the job. Now, even if that person does a shoddy job that maybe in the end ends up costing more money to do it properly, he's fine with that. If you think of it from his perspective, he got control over getting to choose who did the work. He also gets a sense of control, if you will, over that couple now being under some kind of financial strain. Another common behaviour would be undermining that couple 
to their grandchildren, or even in front of them. Now, if those parents say no to something, he may allow it, he may buy them it, he may promise it, he may even argue with the parents in front of the children to show that he's on their side, to try to create some kind of division, to show that he is in charge. He may even arrange things with the grandchildren without checking if it's okay with the parents, just bypassing them completely. Now, when it comes to the partner's parents, things could start out okay. Everyone's okay. Everyone's getting on okay. But inevitably, uh, he, he may try to dominate conversations and situations. He may be very competitive. Either he has a better one or he has it worse than them. Eventually, there is going to be some kind of a fallout, which will of course be the fault of the other of of the partner's parents and on that a common characteristic of narcissism would be playing the blame game it's everyone else's fault now the thing is even when he is caught if you will caught buying the rights you know he's caught with his hands in the cookie jar when he's being held to account for his behavior he may behave as if he doesn't understand what the actual problem is the issues the disagreements you know boundaries being set they're often being blown out of proportion where he is either being victimized or he is being punished unfairly. That's when he brings in other people, you know, the mother, aunts, uncles, family, friends. Now they may contact the the child and their partner wanting to fix things, repair things because he's upset, he's angry, he's confused, he's no idea what happened to cause this. And they may say things like, could you not just reach out to him? After all, he's really nice, he's caring, he hasn't heard from you in weeks or months. What are you going to do if he dies? Think of how guilty you're going to feel. You know, the son and the son-in-law, the daughter-in-law, whoever they are, that young couple, they are being unreasonable. He may even claim he never had a problem with any of the relationships with his own children until that partner turned up. Now, to him, he's going to be presenting that as evidence that it is the partner was a poor choice. That partner is the problem. Again, another common characteristic or trait would be plain one-upmanship. All conversations could be turned to be about him. Even when he's interacting with the grandchildren, it's, it's always almost going to be about him. He may criticize their mum or their dad's choices, their decisions. It's, it's like they have to run things past him first. Even interests, hobbies, sports um, that the grandchildren may be into, it's almost like they have to seek his approval to win his regard, just like his own children did when they were younger. But in short, the narcissistic father-in-law can be very overbearing and can be relentless in criticism, harsh judgments, and the need for control and dominance. You know, the son-in-law is useless. The daughter-in-law is not good enough. But in reality, he, he lacks insight to recognize maybe he doesn't care. In extreme cases, he may even get a kick out of the distress he's causing in that family, in his own child's relationship. He, if he's told no about something, he may just go ahead and do it anyway. It's for their own good because he knows best. And if this goes unchecked, if that behavior goes unchecked or... If the narcissistic father-in-law, if, if, if his child is accepting of this, blind to this, uh, even colludes with it, the relationship for the partner and indeed for the grandchildren is very unhealthy. It can be toxic and it's unsustainable. If that relationship ends, now even though it's been due to unhealthy outside influence and control from the father-in-law, again, that will be used as evidence that the partner was bad, selfish, uncaring, ungrateful and a poor choice. The child should have listened to him because he could see through them all along. Even on that couple's wedding day, it's not uncommon for a narcissistic parent to try to find something either to make it about him or to try to ruin it somehow. So So that's a brief outline of some of the common characteristics of a narcissistic father. Now, as always, there are other things such as gaslighting, there's inconsistency, induced conversations and situations where others are set up to fail. There can be psychological mind games, emotional mind games, you know, using people's words against them. So, you know what, if there's anything I've forgotten, if there's anything you'd like to add, by all means, please feel free to use the comment box below. There are some interesting conversations starting around these videos. But if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.